Daniel, you'll love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yet again, because <laughs> I think back in the when you were flying the Apache, there was this thing called the Comanche yeah. that the Army Saturday. spent a whole bunch of money on, and then we didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, I was that? in flight school, and they had a uh, they brought the Comanche tent out there, and they had us all check it out. And uh, we I sat in the mock-up of the Comanche, and the big thing about it was um, – it didn't have pedals. You twisted the grip for the rudder, for the That's artillery, wow. I should say. So, yeah, so that was weird. like a sass. It just kept itself. You didn't have to. You didn't have to put in pedal. Yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah, and, and that it, was also uh, um, that was the first time I'd ever seen. There were no gauges. It was strictly uh, two big glass MFDs in the front. None of this worked. This was a mock-up of it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I thought it's, you know, at the time I thought, wow, that's interesting. Um, D- Daniel, yeah. as a person that doesn't know a lot about helos, what would be the advantage of not having the pedals and instead having the, the yaw control here? I mean, I'm just asking. I, I don't, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't okay. know what the advantage would be. Other, I don't know. Um, well, because uh, that so, would have to be, strictly fly by wire and right. so if you have a mm, yeah it'd have to be to so let gonky fly it because that way jet pilots <laughs> can fly it with their feet <laughs> flat on the floor so easy a jet pilot can fly it. yeah so then you can do it too <laughs> but it was a test bed um what you know when they canceled that program i think I was in Afghanistan or right about that time when they canceled it. And I was thinking, wow, that, what a waste of money and all. And, uh, and some of the uh, senior maintenance guys were like, no, actually we learned a lot. And it kept the, it kept the research and development fund um, going and all. Mm-hmm. And that's what they said. We got uh, CMOS common missile warning system. We got from that, from the Comanche oh, wow. program. Um, that's where they were testing the uh, Finistron tail because I was out there at uh, oh, the Fort yeah. Rucker, uh mm-hmm. when they had that, uh, I think it was a Dolphin or something that uh, they put a Finistron on the back and they were flying down the runway sideways up to, and they had a car. It was like a, a Camaro. Wombat, I love it. It was a, a Camaro <laughs> riding with it as it's riding, uh, going sideways down the runway. And it was like, wow, you know, what are they doing? They said, oh, they're testing the Finistron showing that it has enough authority you know, to do 60 miles an hour and all. Um, so there was a lot of research and development that came out of that funding. It kept the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the research and development engineers employed doing something. Yeah. Still trying to make a, a armed reconnaissance helicopter in the meantime. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I heard is why they, uh, Wow. Kept the Comanche program, and that's why. Well, this thing now, uh, what is the future arm reconnaissance? The Farah, yeah. yeah so Farah. The, the Farah had an abrupt change of direction, yeah. but this one's more significant because they spent two billion, yeah, and requested another five billion. And um, now the plan is scroll down, Doug. So they had prototypes from Bell and uh, the Sikorsky. But now they're basically saying, you know what? We're just going to focus on the uh, UH-60 and the Apache, um, like modernization. So mm-hmm. they're just going to keep what they have. But it's just like what you said. They don't view it as a failure uh, because they're making progress. The majority of their signature modernization efforts are either on time or ahead of schedule. So you know they really want to do something else. They don't have a replacement for the uh, OH-58, but uh, which, by the way, is coming to DCS very soon. Yeah, they just announced. Uh, but they want to ma- compare or add the uh, Shadow unmanned aircraft system to AH-64E. So kind of like a loyal wingman concept, yeah. which we've talked about with Fat Amy. So now you can have your little fleet of drones to send them down range while you're hiding behind the mountain with your eye heads. Yeah. And a longbow. <laughs> uh, and they even talk about this. The Comanche was $9 billion. Um, yeah. They just couldn't seem to, to square the corner. So it, it, on paper, or at least headline-wise, it sounds like it's something that is bad. But the way you 
put it in perspective, it may be in the end, something that really benefits everybody. Yeah. It sounds like it was kind of a technology demonstrator and they just pulled stuff off of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That worked. And that's where they use the money. Uh, uh, and that's the same thing going with the drones. Everything's going to UAS as drones and all. Um, we just started using them when we were in Afghanistan. And the one big failure I saw on them was the one person controlling it. They told us that we were going to be doing a, uh, we were going to be doing a uh, an assault on a compound, and we were flying cover for the ground element. The drone was up high, and uh, next thing you know, the assault's starting, but it's about a K or two away from the actual where the coordinates were that they gave us. And the drone, the big big voice in the sky, was saying like, "Hey, um, there's still nothing going on," and we're like, "Hang on, the fight's over here." go over here to these coordinates and they're going like nope we're looking and nothing's going on like it's over here the fight is over here quit looking there it's over here and uh they're like, nope we are on the target and there's nothing going on and we're like mm. yeah so we let them go and went on with the uh the guys uh doing the assault and all so that was one of the big deals on that um now obviously Drones are being used a lot more, and the Echo model can control the front seater can control can control uh, oh, wow. a drone now. But that I think y'all had talked about it before, maybe with Casmo or not. But uh, uh, pilot overload. Now you're mm -hmm. controlling not only the, the helicopter, your your targeting system, your front seaters doing the targeting system, the radios, uh, your back oh, seaters flying the aircraft and uh, keeping an eye out around the aircraft. And now he's also got to control a UAV. So yeah, you got a lot going on up front, or you got a lot going on in, in a helicopter. So who knows if that's how they're going to make it uh, with all this research and development, make it uh, better, easier to to manage all that information. Sounds like you guys need like a a Hawkeye type uh, helicopter command and control of drones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Or they could do like a uh, clearing turn, like the Mexican <laughs> government did uh, <laughs> down there <laughs> in McAllen. Um, they had told us when we were down there, they said, hey, the Mexican government is bringing their drone down and they're going to be flying along the border also. So we need to stay away from our side of the border, stay away from the river by at least a mile because their drone is going to be patrolling on the south side of the river and they're going to be. Uh, hugging up on the, the river and all and they showed us a picture and I, i'm telling you the picture of their drone was a cessna 172 with nobody yeah. in it yeah with a, well they said nobody was in it but it, <laughs> they said yeah that was their drone it was going to be an unmanned yeah yeah, yeah. yeah wow clearing turn on that because yeah that's what uh yeah <laughs> jeez I, I mean, hey, if that's what you got, that's what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah if it works. Yeah, we never saw it, but uh, they said it was flying and whatever. 